Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 291 of the Iron Coop Fights movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Greetings. And Everett. Hey, what's up? And this week, the team reviews Edge of Tomorrow or Live, Die, Repeat, or I'm not really sure what the name is. Um, when Earth falls under attack from invincible aliens, no military unit in the world is able to beat them. Major William Cage, an officer who has never seen combat, is assigned to a suicide mission. Killed within moments, Cage finds himself thrown into a time loop in which he relives the same brutal fight and his death over and over again. However, Cage's fighting skills improve with each encore, bringing him and a comrade ever closer to defeating the aliens. I'm going to explain this rating system, or our rating system. On the show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend. While a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate, a loss means we do not recommend the title. So obviously we said last week was our last episode, but uh, Jade hasn't had the baby, so we're going to do one last one. Who wants to go first? Uh, I volunteer as per usual. Um, So I've seen this movie many times. I really like it. Um, I like the concept. I just like the idea of the, you know, reset after death. You know, in a lot of movies we watch, we complain about the consequences where no one ever dies. And I think that this is a fun little subversion of that trope where you constantly die, but you're able to keep that experience. And I actually like that aspect of it a lot where it's like, this is how you become that action hero by getting the experience where you know exactly what's going to happen in about five minutes. I like the world building in this movie a decent amount. There's a lot of parallels with like World War II and other things. Um, I like the technology okay. I'm not a super big fan of the mech suits that they use, uh, but you know I don't have a big issue with them. Um, my com- only real complaint I have about this movie is primarily that I think that the aliens are kind of boring to look at in the sense that like they're just like spinning around and like when you do see them not spinning around they're just like eels almost like like masses of eels like with a bunch of sharp spikes on them um and i just i don't know i i always find a cooler looking alien entity to be something that is really nice in these style of sci-fi movies but it is a win for me and i i do fully enjoy it everett i'm gonna give it a win as well so I've never seen this movie all the way through. I've seen many clips over the years. Of, so I basically knew what it was about, but I had never seen it from point A to point B. And I'm going to give it a win. I, I really wait, enjoy what? it. You, wait, you've never seen this? Nope. Oh, what the fuck? I, I, knew the, I knew the plot. I'd seen clips. I knew what happens, but I'd never seen it in its entirety. But now that I have, I really enjoyed it. It kept my attention the entire way through. I think it had really good acting, and I think it had really good writing. I also really enjoy the concept that was demonstrated, you know, going back over and over and over again. And I'll give it the same compliment that I gave source code, which is I'm glad that they didn't bore you over and over again with the same shit. They sort of had those moments where they sped you through and basically implied what was going on instead of wasting your time, which I thought was really cool. And, you know, for the most part, like I I really do love those uh, like advanced military movies, especially when you can find figures of them. But there is one part of this movie that I was a little confused by, and that's the ending. And I was hoping maybe I could get an explanation if you guys understood it a little bit more than I did. But other than that, um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty top tier film. Okay. Um, I I like this movie. I feel like they put Tom Cruise in there to sell the movie, but I actually think he was the wrong person for the role. Um, although he he did his best work, but like it it wasn't. I don't, I just don't think he's the right fit for this at all. Um, and then like ever said, the ending, like to me, source code, that's ending. That ending was easier to swallow than this one in some ways. Well, and I mentioned that in my source code review, remember I said like, it's got the classic, like you know, the situation changes ending. Like, yeah, I don't like this one as much like this one. I'm more kind of annoyed with, I don't know. It's more know. like a, like all the pieces. So I can give you the explanation behind it, but it's a stupid explanation. Like I'm going to tell you it and then Kia's going to be like, 
well, how does that work? I mean, like, and ask me a question, and then it's going to be like, I don't know. That's I mean, just... I think I get it too, but yeah. go ahead. Okay, well, what is it? What's the explanation? So the idea is that since he falls into the, like, hive mind, like the core of the creature, and the blood gets released again, he gets sent back one final time. So he gets sent back as the creature is dying, but he gets sent back further because it's the, like, core of the creature and there's more blood. However, he never gets to get sent back again because now the creature is dead. So once he's sent back that time, it's over. The link is done. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily explain how when he gets sent back, all the aliens are dead. Right? No, because the because... creature the creature exists outside of time. Well, kind of, not really. He, because the he, creature... Okay. Go ahead, you. I was going to say, he doesn't get sent back. He actually gets sent forward. That's why it's kind of stupid. <laughs> oh, I didn't pick up on that. Because the it's the day of the invasion, right? And it's it's no, it's the it's, same. But it's before he was waking up. It's, it's the same time he was landing at the beginning of the movie, though. When he dies, yeah, when he, like when, when he dies when he, and comes back, he comes back right as he's like, uh, you know, he's like knocked off out the helicopter. Yeah. So, no, I know, he, but what time does he die? 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Right. So he's when he resets the day, he resets it at like 8 a.m. Right. But he gets sent back further because he's with the core of the creature. So he got sent back like two days because he got sent back to the, the very start of the movie when he's landing before he had gone, been forced to go to the boot camp. Mm -hmm. like, I, I thought those were two. I thought this happened on the same day because they have a Donald Gleason as a line earlier or not earlier, but in the movie where he's like, if I knew that I, uh, I thought I was sorry. His line was, I thought when I saw you earlier today, I would never see you again. But then he saw him again when he walked back in his office. I saw, uh, I thought yeah, that was all he, one day. It was just two separate points. His reset is two days. It's he goes back to the day before the invasion. So if the invasion is on a Friday, Right, the the Friday is when he dies, Everett. But when he gets resent, he goes back to like Thursday at like one in the well, afternoon. When he wakes up at the okay. end, he wakes up on Friday. No, I took it as when he wakes up at the end, he wakes up on Thursday when he's landing in the helicopter before he met the general. And the reason they're mm -hmm. celebrating Maybe that that's the, true, yeah. that the war is won is because all of a sudden the enemy no longer exists. Because there's a line at the end of the movie where they say, "Tomorrow our troops will land on the beaches and move unopposed." To meet the Chinese, well, and the also Russians. because he meets um, Emily Blunt again on the on the way she is on Thursday. Yeah, and he so. sees like his his squad moving. So, and he's also an officer again. He's not demoted to private. So he resets Thursday. Um, uh, that kind of makes more sense, though, Emerson. Like so, the way you said it, like the creatures like, exists out of time. I right, guess because... what happens to it happens like at all times. Right, because otherwise resetting the day wouldn't do anything. The creature wouldn't be able to keep its knowledge. Mm -hmm. I just think I just think he should have died. Yeah, that would have been a better ballsier movie. But this is what I said when I said in source code, and and I understand that you're more annoyed with this ending. I'm more annoyed with source code's ending. It doesn't really matter, but I don't like at the end of these style of movies when the core logic changes to allow for a happy ending. Well, I just think from a character standpoint, he didn't want to put his life on the line. Right, and then the thematic ending is he died. He chooses to die. Yeah, to save the world. Yeah, that's what should have happened. And then it's like, oh, happy. I don't. I, don't I mean, you could always just turn it off after, like, right after he dies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I remember feeling this way when I saw it the first time too. Just sort of being like, really, and and source code was the same. Like, I remember, I remember the ending more than the movie, because it was a little bit like whiplash, like. You're kind of in, in invested in the concept, and then they just pull out Change the rug. It, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But so, like, you know, I I like. So I, this is not something that realistically we could see more of, but I love those little scenes showing like. There's a few scenes on a map where it shows where the aliens have taken over in Europe, and it's really cool because like there's a front in Spain, there's a front in Central Italy. There's a front in Greece. There's a front in like northern Sweden. There's the Russian front, obviously. Like, so it's cool to me this idea that there's all these different battles happening at the same time. Um, I really like the aircraft that are shown in this movie. The like VTOL oh, like aircraft. The yeah, yeah uh, we don't see much of them. 
Uh, but I think those are a really cool, like, okay, here's the evolution of military technology. Not a big fan of the exosuits. I don't like them very much. I understand that they're realistic. I think they're ugly. Yeah, but they they seem ugly. And to me, they seem like they would, like, be fundamentally flawed from a combat. Like, put armor on. Like, some of the guys have armor on the front, mm. but most of them don't. And it, to me, that's just, like... I, yeah. I, I like them, but it kind of suspends my disbelief a little bit when they're starting to get into cars and stuff with them still on. That's sort of like where I checked out about those battle suits. And I, I have to do this because I did this to Avatar, and this is going to be my new thing on this channel. Now that we're in like the post-podcast era where it's not even clear when we'll do episodes or what we'll watch, at this point in the invasion, we would have nuked the shit out of Europe like 75 times. Okay, this whole like we're gonna charge them with mech equipped infantry. No, 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 no. Come on, bro. We'd be nuke at every city like six times. Yeah, I also thought it's kind of odd that they seem to think that they have the element of surprise. Yeah, yeah, like they they simultaneously think the aliens are stupid, um, and like can't detect them, but they're beating them tactically. So it's like. Yeah, um, like a major invasion, they would they wouldn't be able to anticipate that. Yeah, so it, the only explanation I can think of is that the humans think the aliens are like like animals essentially, and not mm-hmm. capable of higher level tactical thought. Um, I, I think, love that um, one. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say I love that one flashback sequence, and this is something that I think the movie does really well exploring because like once you settle into the idea that he's gonna keep going and fighting and dying, it's really cool that scene where he decides to stay in London. And you get to see the aftermath of the invasion in London where they counterattack across the channel. Yeah. Like, and he gets that realization, like, we lose everything. But doesn't um, he, but aren't they also specifically looking for him? I don't know if during the invasion of London they're specifically looking for him, but I thought I, I took that as like the after the invasion fails, they cross the channel and take like I got the impression that they were specifically searching him out. Oh yeah, I didn't. I they didn't were maybe on that. the on the base, maybe, but after they launched, I'm pretty sure they forgot about him. Yeah, but when when they cross London, like he's standing there, they're going right for him. Yeah, but there's like large portions of the city are on fire in the background, so like they clearly are just attacking. Um, wasn't that part of it though? Where he doesn't he go the next day and he's like, they 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 know to find me. Like that was that was after because. It's like one or two scenes after London that he starts having the visions. Yeah. And then the visions are of the dam. So he goes to the dam and then at the dam, he's like, they're tricking me. They're trying yeah. to get me. I realize so, you're talking about the aliens, not like his superiors. Uh, my yeah. I wrong. didn't know what the hell um, you were talking about on the base. Everett. I just was like, well, yeah, also, sure. um, remember like they, yeah. they say like those drones are like the claws of like the overall animal. And like the alphas are the ones with the actual brain, so I just kind of took it as like they kill whatever they see. Yes, so they hop based out. off like an anime, right? Yeah, I've never read it. Um, it's called "All You Need Is Kill." It's a stupid name. Not a great title. So, uh, the the five major changes: Major Bill Cage and Private Kaiji Korea are entirely different. And this is kind of what I was like: he should be a private. He should be a no name nobody. Like not Tom Cruise, you know what I mean? That's why yeah. I just feel like he's miscast. But they couldn't, they wouldn't have sold the movie unless, like, right now, if you were gonna make this movie and you put it like, like a young actor with a name like Timothy Chalamet or something, which, like, I don't really like him, but he would probably be a better fit for this role. Um, he's a Japanese soldier in the UDF. Is that the United Defense Force? Yeah, fighting for his country as this story takes place in Japan. Kaiji signed up and wanted to fight against the mimics while Cage was an American that never wanted to fight. By the time they do wind up fighting, they are both new to it all, but Kaiji wanted to be there while Cage was constantly looking for a way out. I mean, I think it should be a young guy who like definitely didn't want to be there. Um, Kaiji was also trained by Sergeant Farrell while Cage was trained by Rita. For the most part, Kaiji didn't have anywhere near as much interaction with Rita as Cage did. Until the last few resets. Yeah, because there has to be like love in there. Kaiji was going to forego everything to make himself the best he could. While it seemed obvious that Cage had fallen for Rita and was training in part because he loved her and wanted to save her. 
Mm. Uh, Rita Rataski from All You Need Is Kill would bitch slap Emily Blunt. Uh, Emily Blunt was awesome in Edge of Tomorrow. She was one of the best parts of the film, but uh, blah, blah, blah. In the novella, Rita had killed more mimics on her own before she gained the ability to reset the day and became a famous war hero. Once she gained the mimics ability, she got even better. I don't like that. Going through several hundred attempts at the Battle of Verdun. Verdun? Is that? Yeah, Verdun. Is that, why is it spelled like that? Isn't it normally D-U-N? I'm not sure if it's a difference, like an anglicized spelling, but it is Verdun. Like, I don't the Maybe we change it. Of Rita had her first battle at Verdun. She learned how to be really good, but I don't think she would hold a candle to her novella counterpart. Another significant age was the character. The reader in the books was somewhere between 19 and 22. She signed up for the UDF illegally at 16 and fought battles for years. That doesn't make sense. Like, if they're so deadly, how did she survive for years? I don't think they ever said how old Emily Blunt is supposed to be, but um, I don't like that as much either. The movie's better there, too. Yeah. I like that she was also a nobody who, like, everyone's like how how did she kill all those mimics and so it's like a big mystery you think she's just a total badass somehow and it's like yeah she is now but actually she reset the day a thousand times yeah and so it would happen again that it would be like some other nobody who who could do it again Mm -hmm. um the mimics are much scarier in the movie really okay describe them as giant bloated frogs with four legs, a tail, and a hard endoskeleton. I have no idea how to describe the movie version. It seemed like they crossed a giant metal dog with a psycho octopus and gave it the speed of a cheetah. The book mimics are also very fast, but they don't have the same tentacle action going on that the movie version has. The hierarchy between mimics are very different as well. The movie has normal mimics that seem to be grunt soldiers and alpha mimics that are the generals. Then there is the Omega, which is pretty much the king of all mimics. If an alpha dies, the Omega mimic will reset the day and use the info that it gained to help win the war next time. In the book, you don't have an alpha and an Omega. The book has antennas and servers. At every battle, there are several antenna and one server. The antenna kind of control the standard grunt mimics and send information to the server. If the server dies, it resets the day and then passes that info on to the other antenna the next time around. In order to win the battle, the UDF has to kill all the antenna in the area and then the server so it can't send the info anywhere and properly reset the day. That is very different. There's only one Omega while there are many servers. Hmm. That is pretty different. What do you guys think about that? I mean, um, I that kind of sounds like it's like it would be impossible to beat them, like yeah. realistically. I kind of like the movie version a little bit better. Uh, there's the map. The war and our world are very different. In the book, the mimics landed over 20 years before the battle in Japan. The mimics were sent by an alien race looking to colonize the planet. They don't know if they were sent sentient life forms on this planet, and they didn't have time to check. Okay. <laughs> they sent the mimics to help terraform Earth to make it more habitable for them when, when they get here. The mimics landed and initially were very peaceful. The problem was that they eat Earth and excrement poison gas that was transforming the planet. Humanity attacked and tried to stop them, which started the war. The mimics evolved and got smarter and stronger with better weapons and started to win. In the movie, they landed five years before the Battle of Europe. There really isn't any info on on what they're doing or why or what started the fight. We just know that there was a lot less time for all this to escalate so far. Because Mm -hmm. of the time difference, the world of the book and the world of the movie are very different. Having a world war for over 20 years where parts of the world are wiped out means that you start running out of stuff. Some things become extinct can only be read about in books. The novella version of Rita being so young only knew of war growing up, and it made her a very different person from the one we see in the movie. Another distinction in the war is that in the movie, we only won a battle because the mimics let us think we won. I I didn't like that part. They regroup and change tactics to make it easier to pummel us later. In the novella, humanity legitimately won those battles. The movie definitely had a much bleaker outlook on our prospects of survival in the end. I mean, you I know, don't know about that last sentence. You know, I don't know, like, the way that they are built doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, they are they seem like a completely combat alien civilization. Yeah. And also very animalistic. So I wonder what they even want. Like, they don't seem like they want to build a civilization on Earth. Yeah, well, 
like they could just be like they're just creatures that are like they're like a virus they just hit destroy everything and yeah, didn't they speculate on that like there there, there could like, be hundreds like, of these yeah. asteroids floating around like yeah why like why are they metal are they metal i thought they were like some they do have like a metallic look to them i don't something know something metallic about them yeah and like what would that mean genetically like what what in their environment made them metal they're hard, maybe, bro. I don't know maybe to, to survive you. like the impact from the atmosphere and from space or something. I don't know. The endings are drastically different. I can't even tell what the fuck this picture is. I think it's soldiers who are getting like hit by something. I see this. I see like this person on the right. Like it looks like they did a strike, or they're both about to strike. Like two samurai. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't tell what the fuck they are, but <laughs> in the novel, because Kaiji and Rita have both stolen the aliens abilities at some point they both act as antenna unfortunately that means that the day will keep resetting as long as both of them are alive the only way for the day to end is if one of them dies so at the end of everything they have an all-out slugfest with each other to see who is worthy of surviving the day and fighting for humanity kaiji winds up killing rita and goes on to be the next hero of the udf for the battles to come in the movie, they walk into a situation where neither is going to get out alive and they have to sacrifice their lives to save humanity, but Tom Cruise gets the Omega's blood on him and regains the power to reset the day of on his death. In doing so, everyone that dies is alive again with a fairy tale ending. The war is over and humanity can celebrate. Wait, remind me, if he resets the day that he killed them... But they no longer exist. So he resets the day, but the Omega's dead, which kills everything else. Because the Omega exists outside of it because the Omega is able to remember and like obviously act on stuff even though it's resetting the day. But how does he how does he reset if their Omega is gone? Because so that, that he's resetting as it's dying is what I took it as. It's not fully dead when he's resetting because he's dying as it's as it's dying and then like it dies. I mean Oh, that's weird. Oh, okay. That's the only way it could work, but you really have to kind of like make that shit up in your head. Yeah. Because like in terms of movie logic, like it blew up. <laughs> like He's dead. Mm -hmm. Like every, you know, when things blow up in movies, usually like you see the body parts breaking apart and all that. But that means death. Not yeah. like, oh, he's still alive. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, right now it seems like the movie's definitely better than the book, honestly. You know what this kind of genre rem uh, reminds me of? Did you guys ever see that movie from like 2011 called Battle Los Angeles? I did. I kind of yeah. liked that movie. I liked Battle Los Angeles. I, I, th I, like I think I saw it in theaters. I haven't seen it in a while, though. We saw it in theaters, too. But it kind of uh, this kind of reminded me of it, like the whole like hellscape fighting aliens and stuff. I don't remember why I liked it. I don't remember how it ends, but I remember no. being like, hey, it's not bad. I'm going to be real. I like it because it's like they're just fighting. It's just Marines fighting, and it's cool to see like that's it's Los cool Angeles. Action, yeah. And there's the Pacific, and the aliens are here. And like, I remember like the explosives and all that looked good. Yeah, who made that movie? I don't know, but it has like some really sick scenes of L.A. from the sky with yeah. like the military flying over and attacking. Oh, that's Aaron Eckhart, and... I forgot. Yeah, he's the yeah, main he's, guy. He's the lead. Um, Bridget Monahan, Joey King. Why does she seem familiar? I have no idea. Oh, she was in uh, Bullet Train. That's why. Mm. Um, who made this? Director Jonathan Liebsman? What else has he done? Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Wrath of the Titans? Oh, that heard that. Uh, he did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, do you guys have any uh, anything? Oh, Fight of the Week? Do we have anything? Um, I mean, well, Kiev, you gained the ability to reset the day like that, like in fight. But like, let's say hypothetically, like you're, it's a normal world, not alien invasion. Okay. You've got the ability to reset the day upon dying each day, but you have to die. Would you use it for a while or would you be like, fuck this? I'm going to sleep. I don't want to keep this ability. So even if I don't die. No, you have to die every day for it to keep resetting the day. If you like go through a day, you lose the power. I'm just saying you gain the power. It's explained how it works to you. You have it. Do you use it for anything? Or I feel you like, like I would probably use it once and then be like, this is fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> cause I really couldn't do it. It's not like I could get a million dollars. I mean, you might be able to, you got to get some passwords, you know? 
like if it was like on the night of a UFC, then maybe I could make like the craziest bets in the world and win, I guess. Cause I, I would live out and to see the result. I guess I could do that. Um, but if there's no sporting event that night to bet on, then like, I, I don't know. There's no point in robbing a bank. I can't keep it. Right. Right. But you could, you could like get, probably get information. I don't know. I would probably like, I'd probably do some insane shit and then be like, all right, reset the day. <laughs> yeah, I would probably do it once and be like, man, I shouldn't have killed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next, you just start being really nice to him the next yeah. time you see him. Like, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> just get the winning lotto numbers and then just memorize them. Yeah, if back. it was on a night of a lottery draw, then it's like, ooh. Yeah. Win the $1 billion. Yeah, like, I mean, but if it wasn't, then like that really sucks. <laughs> what do you mean? You could you could time the exact moment the gardener starts mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know, like, you could use it for like moronic things. You're like you're like I know yeah. exactly when the tr- clock will chime. Well, it'd be interesting because like if you take away the rule of it goes away after a day. Like let's say like you have three days until the lottery is drawn. How would it work? Like you go three days, you get the numbers, and you get the winning numbers. But then if you go back. Does everything happen exactly the same way or depending on how Wait, you change your right. actions? But how would it be three days? How would I go back three days? Everett's just saying, like, make it be three days. No, I'm saying, like, with, you know, like the butterfly effect, like, would you, with that knowledge, act differently upon coming back and change the outcome somehow? I don't know, but Tom Cruise I don't acts know that differently I could at multiple points yeah. in the movie and he still stuff happens. I don't know that I would affect the lottery. Like, I think that would probably be outside of my realm of, you just going to work and like waiting for the lottery. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it would have to be on a day where you could make a bet or something. Otherwise, it just blows. And then you have to kill yourself. And what if I like did it at a wrong angle, like at one point, and then I ended and then up you just like, did the hospital. <laughs> like, yeah. Then I'm like begging people to kill me. Like just fucking do it. Like the day goes by and you lose the power. Meanwhile, like your back's broken in the middle of the ICU. Yeah. yeah and you're like, this yeah. was not the play. <laughs> Um. All right. So there was an. Oh, do you guys have anything for Roundup? No. Uh, I have a minor thing. Um. Since we reported that HBO is getting rid of a bunch of their animated stuff, I've gone back uh bit by bit and started watching the old Justice League cartoons, and I still love them. They're great. I I like the older ones a little bit more than I do Unlimited, but maybe that's just because they're like it's a smaller roster and it's a little bit more streamlined. Unlimited yeah. gets a little bit more convoluted because there's like 50 heroes now, but they're still really well written and really they hold up well. Mm-hmm. So I'd watch them before they go away. All right. Um, so Ant Man had a trailer. Mm-hmm. I saw it. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think? I'm gonna I be mean, honest. Uh... I didn't like. I didn't like hate the trailer, but I just I don't care about any of Marvel anymore. I just am like. Eh. I liked her hair from the first movie. And then it's just been like more and more of a downgrade every time. I know they're gonna say, "Yeah, oh, look, she looks like the comics." Like, who cares? Well, it's isn't it kind of unfortunate that the original actress is in that picture and then she's just not in the movie? Well, I mean, she's aged up, but yeah, she's in jail so... now, apparently. She's a criminal. Like she, yeah, she's just doing... like her dad. How much yeah. you want to bet it's gonna be for like? I was trying to save people and like. Mm. Yeah, it's like going to be the same. my things. shrinking suit to like steal something from a 7 Eleven. Um, Kang, here's Kang's like real look. What do you think? Uh, I like it. I mean, it doesn't look awful, I guess. I mean, I'm okay with them coming to the realization that he shouldn't just be blue and like, <laughs> oh, it's his mask. Like, mm-hmm. well, I don't know. Well, I, he doesn't look that good to me. Like, he looks like a Power Ranger villain. <laughs> And I don't I mean, will, uh, um, who is it? Who is the other one that they said looked like a Power Ranger villain? Oh, Apocalypse. Yeah. Like he doesn't look that bad, but he's 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 in the ballpark. Like that. Are you sure it's Apocalypse? Seem... Apocalypse from X Men. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Who else would I be talking about? For some reason, I thought you were talking about Steppenwolf. Mm. No, like this does not seem like badass to me. No, yeah, yeah, and that's that's because they're trying to be comic accurate. I will. Yeah. I will say, um, having to do with this mask, you made a comment once, like a while ago, that everyone's using that like Star Lord disappearing mask digitalized technique now, and it's getting kind of boring. 
Like, yeah, but you understand that, right? Yeah. right? Because from a story standpoint, it's like the nicest thing ever because writers don't even have to think about where do they put the helmet? Where does the helmet go? Like, well, it's so does, they can show the ring? actor's faces. So here are like the rings that we think are related to Shang-Chi's rings or what's her name's bangles. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be really sick if they weren't and all the people who were theory crafting <laughs> had to be like, fuck, I'm just wrong. So in a multiverse, he's meeting multiple versions. I mean, it looks like that guy has a different armor, don't, don't you think? Maybe it's the one you like. I can't tell, but like, you know, he does he have one in this? He does also. The real Scott somehow dies at the end of this movie, and it's just like a, a multiverse clone takes his place. I don't love this chest, this center chest piece. Yeah. I mean, this does like just look at this image. It looks silly. Like, I'm not seeing, like, this is some badass world, like, stakes. I mean, on one hand, you're right. But on the other hand, it's pretty on par with a lot of the shit we've seen recently. I know. I see see one guy in a goofy suit followed by another guy in an even goofier suit. And look, there's a portal behind them. And also, like, someone with a giant head behind him. That's Yeah, Modok looks kind of weird without his mask on. You see him for, like, half a second. Oh, it's a guard. Uh, Yeah. Well, Modok's behind him. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Look. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> he looks weird as fuck, and and he's supposed to look weird as fuck, so like whatever. But he looks like Mister Electric from Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Ah, that's good. Yeah, he does. I never actually saw that. I don't know what that is. Was that a joke movie or was it a real movie? It was. It, it was, was a real movie, but it makes fun of itself. Really Do me a favor, just just real quick, pieces. just go on Google and look up Mister Electric, and you'll see it. But I, if I remember correctly, it was like a. It was it was based off of his kids' like actual dreams. I knew that this was gonna come up with a company. When oh, you said okay, that. okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, it's, I saw this meme going around, and I didn't even know who the fuck that guy was. It's George Lopez. Yeah, I mean, I I could see that, but I I didn't understand that it was like a a thing, a real yeah. thing. Yeah, that okay. was from the movie. All right, I mean, yeah, that doesn't look good. Uh, February seventeenth. It's close. Is this time. Avatar. Oh. Now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like they're trying to build the hype. Yeah, they really were actually trying to copy Avatar, like with the floating mountains and shit. Yeah. Not interested. Was that like a, a sea of Scots? I get it, because he's Ant Man. It's supposed to be like the ants all working. I think together. that is supposed to be a sea of Scots. Yeah, that's weird. Um, I'm not a fan of the recasting of the daughter. I'm kind of done with uh, hope. Van Dyne, like she was good in the first movie and just has been worse every every time. All the ships just kind of remind me of like the Wakandan ships. I just see I just see like CGI. To me, there's nothing real here. Nothing to even like kind of put into a realm of like I can't connect my brain to any of this. It feels like no stakes at all. Is that weird? Like we're literally watching people get hit with energy blasts and falling off edges and yeah. I feel like there's no stakes. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't think this is 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 this guy going to hurt kill someone? Probably not. Is he going to get destroyed? Probably. Maybe, who cares? Like I I mean, and I then there'll be a post credit scene where he like escapes and Yeah. He's like oh. I don't know why I'm here, but I think it has something to do with Spider-Man. You can call me <laughs> Modoc. <laughs> Oh my God! It looks like Kang is gonna kill Scott. I gotta see this movie to see if he does actually kill him. No, you can just watch Creed three and <laughs> extrapolate what'll happen from Creed three. I mean, it's quite obvious. Like he's not gonna kill. Him. I mean, is this gonna be like Bane versus Batman in The Dark Knight Rises, where he fucks him up? I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, I think it's probably gonna have the same like plot outcome, but probably not the same like tension and that movie sucked but like that was one good scene so i mean it definitely seems like he's killing scott and maybe he's the only one who can't shrink from the other multiverse because his helmet got destroyed <sighs> yeah i mean it, do you guys see think this is cool no. It's the same shot that they used for Mysterio in that one thing from Spider-Man Far From Home. I just oh, don't isn't. think from Spider-Man Far From Home. What? When you Remember see that Mysterio shot at the beginning? The end, it was the end of Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And Mysterio comes down and goes, you don't want any part of this. Blah. That's it's what he's doing. It's the same frame, the same hand movement, same shot. I'm just seeing I'm just seeing a guy in a weird suit shooting energy blasts. Like, haven't we seen that? Yeah, we've seen I mean, that a million times. We all know that this isn't great, guys. I don't know what you're expecting. Oh, I didn't realize it was called Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Yeah. Are they going to give Wasp nothing to do again? <laughs> Probably. This time she's in the title. Are they paid the same, do you think? Because I don't think so. I don't think Hope and I mean, Scott I don't think so because, because if we're being honest, like I'm not going to go see it for her. I would see it for Paul Rudd. Um, all right, here's some news. An unconfirmed update on Marvel Studios Spider-Man 4. Pity. Um, Spider-Man 4 is expected to begin production this year with a budget of $200 million. Reports also suggest the film will release in 2025. Okay, so the future is now. Black Adam star Noah Centineo seems to have accepted his time as Adam Smasher has reached its end. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. His... We had such a wonderful time making that movie. I don't think I've ever enjoyed four months on a shoot like I did during the filming of that movie. There were so many of us and we were all just blended together and everybody was so willing to just befriend one another and we really became a family. And that's inclusive of Dane Dw- Dwayne Johnson as well. He set the tone. All right, blah, 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 blah. In the heart of that film. I honestly can't even speak. Okay. I can't even speak to any of that. I don't really know what their plan is and I'm psyched to see what they do, what they do with the DC work. Okay. For me, I'm just really excited. He had a stroke at the middle of the <laughs> For me, I'm just really excited to see Peter Safran and James Gunn's vision for DC. Those guys, they know what they're doing based on what. So we'll give it to him. I'm excited. He made one good Guardians movie and the other one was meh. And People really like another... Suicide Squad, though. I mean, who really likes Suicide Squad? I don't know. The mass of people on Twitter. Did they? I don't know. The Look at the reviews. It seemed positive. I liked it, sort of. I think it's a pretty lukewarm film that hardly anyone saw. Let's see. I mean, didn't most people just not see it? Isn't that the real truth of it? 7.2 based on the people that saw it. I mean, it's about a C. Yeah. Like, it's all right. I'll never watch it again. Will you guys? No. Maybe if I'm bored. If you're bored, you, you got better things to do, man. <laughs> uh, maybe that's true. All right. Spider Man Far From Home star Jake Gyllenhaal and UFC's Conor McGregor look buff. I heard about this and I have no idea what the fuck this Roadhouse is. Roadhouse photos. They were doing a remake of Roadhouse. Okay. Which the spin on Roadhouse will see Gyllenhaal play a former UFC fighter, which we're guessing explains McGregor's presence, who takes a job as a bouncer at a rough and tumble Roadhouse in the Florida Keys, but soon discovers that not everything is what it seems in this tropical paradise. I I really like the paragraph after the related. Um, at the top there, there's been some controversy. Where? Controversy. Go down. Oh, here. Yeah, they're saying that Connor took steroids for this, and that's why he's been out of the USADA pool. I think he took steroids to heal his leg, but whatever. Yeah, but it, it's just funny because it's like, I, I'd love for like some of these people who are like, come on, man, like Hugh Jackman says he's all natural. It's like, really? Professional fighters are taking some steroids so they could get ready for a movie role. Like, Yeah, yeah, and Hugh Jackman never did. Um. Hey, real quick. Um, it has no release date, which is interesting. Yeah, it from up. someone who doesn't watch MMA fights very often, can you guys tell me what happened with Francis Ngannou? Because I saw him in the headlines recently. Like he got. Uh, he doesn't um, look that jacked in these photos. Like his chest I mean, is big. He's jacked for him. Like he's he's bigger. He's definitely bigger. This is so stupid. Um, also, apparently that movie is like a, a cult hit, and and the fact that they're remaking it is odd. What happened with Francis Ngannou is um, Francis Ngannou wanted to be allowed to fight in other promotions like boxing to make a shit ton of fucking money. The UFC says, no, you, due to your contract, you can only fight for us. And he goes, well, you don't pay me enough to fight for you. And they said, well, you either fight for us or you wait out your contract. So he waited out his contract. UFC offered him a bunch of money, the most money a heavyweight has ever been offered, but it still kind of pales in comparison to like giant prize fights in boxing because UFC is pretty fucking greedy when it comes to paying the fighters. And um, 
So his contract expired. He rejected the money and he's gone. Mm, all right. Yeah. So he's off to do his own thing. I mean, he could come back, but he probably never will, honestly. Damn. Okay. All right. Madame Webb's new logo reveal reveals a very interesting spider themed image. What do you think is the very oh, interesting boy. part of this spider? Oh, wow. Look, it's comic themed. And let's uh... see. I hate everything. Yeah, I honestly like I see this and I just don't care. Like I like yeah. Spider Man, but what like why should I give a shit about this? Like what does it, it bring to the like, table? It seems like they're saying that this story will take place before Peter Parker is even born. Pregnant Mary Parker will be front and center in the story. Um one popular theory even suggests she's sent to the MCU, hence why that world has a Spider Man and Sony's doesn't. <laughs> Since when does it not have a Spider-Man? They just can't legally show him. Um, okay. It's an intriguing concept, but not one we have much faith in the studio managing to pull off. Oh, why? Because it's not Marvel? Because Marvel pulls everything off so well. Um, okay, whatever. This is this is do you remember when they do you guys remember No Way Home? And Venom too, and how they put Venom. They in tried to be like Venom's in, and then they just sent him back. He's out. They, just, they just kicked him straight out in the next movie. I mean, that shit was so funny. <laughs> Everyone's like, Venom's in the movie, guys. Um, Transformers director Michael Bay forced to deny killing a pigeon on set of Netflix's Six Underground. What the fuck? I don't even, I don't even know what the fuck this is. Um. Uh, has revealed the Transformers director Michael Bay is facing charges in Italy relating to the death of a pigeon on the set of his movie in 2018. The filmmaker is said to have made several attempts to clear the case and categorically denied the allegations in the statement shared with the trade. I am a well-known animal lover and major animal activist. No animal involved in the production was injured or harmed or in any other production I've worked on in the past 30 years. Pigeons are a protected species in Italy. Interesting. No, they can Uh, have all the ones that live here. A homing pigeon is alleged to have been killed by a dolly while filming was taking place in Rome with an unnamed witness providing Italian authorities with a description and a photo of what they claim to have seen happen. So it was a trained bird. Okay, so it wasn't just one of the ones off the street. We have clear video evidence, a multitude of witnesses and safety officers that exonerate us from these claims and disproves their one paparazzi photo, which gives a false story. There is an ongoing court case, so I cannot get into the specifics, but I'm confident we will prevail when I have my day in court. I would not plead guilty to having harmed an animal. Okay. Wow. Interesting. That seems stupid. I'm going to be real, bro. Like, come on, a pigeon? But and it wasn't even why. like, oh, they tortured it. A dolly may have ran over one. Well, it, was a car- it was a carrier pigeon. Oh, that's a trained bird. Yeah, but every- well, let me ask you a question, right? If if you have a trained bird that's like doing something and something runs over it and you're like ah shit it died are you going to court over it? Well, I mean it, it depends on the situation. It's endangered. It's a pigeon. If but if I like it was trained. Yeah, if I it's if I pig- shut up, Kia. You're just it's true. To find no, I mean it's a they somebody trained that bird. Listen, somebody, you just fucking switched from it's endangered to <laughs> it so, was it's trained. A, it's endangered. It's in train. It was trained, and somebody it's fucking trained. Just fucking somebody trained. fucking rolled the dolly over that. Listen, and I don't want to hear anything from Everett on safety about birds and keeping them alive and well. Okay, listen. Different situations, my friend. <laughs> This this is I just I think it's stupid. Oh, this is good. Rick and Morty star co-creator Justin Roiland facing felony domestic violence charges after 2020 incident. If he's found guilty, he goes to jail for seven years. It's hard guess, to overstate uh... how inaccurate the recent media coverage of this situation has been. To be clear, not only is Justin innocent, but we also have every expectation that this matter is on course to be dismissed once the district attorney's office has completed its methodical review of the evidence. We look forward to clearing Justin's name and helping him move forward as swiftly as possible. Okay. So what did he do? He Who did he beat up? Um, Allegedly. Not guilty. It's the second paragraph. So. Uh, criminal complaint was originally filed. 42-year-old was charged with one felony count of domestic battery with corporal injury and one felony count of false imprisonment by menace, violence, fraud, and or deceit. 
The alleged victim I, victim's identity has not been made public, though the Jane Doe was reportedly dating Roland at the time. Okay. Sort uh, your shit okay. out. I don't know. Um, okay, here. We'll, we'll save that one. <laughs> Newest set photos of Stephen Amell back as Green Arrow with other returning guests. Uh, uh, so, so for the Flash finale, right? He had an out. Yeah. Uh, I thought there was a picture, but yeah so there's that picture of pregnant joker if you want to go back to that (laughs) superman a possible front runner to play the man of steel in james gunn's reboot might have been revealed um it's henry cavill no i'm kidding Um, (laughs) gun is not writing this um current front runner is australian actor who currently stars an hbo teen show and previously appeared in a netflix rom-com trilogy Okay, before we get to the identity, um, it's Jacob Elordi. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay, he doesn't seem. He looks. That young. He looks familiar. I haven't seen that stuff, but he doesn't seem that young for a movie that's coming out in like five years. But I, I, I don't. I don't think know if I see him like, as Superman. I mean, you will if they put him in the suit. What is he wearing in this? <laughs> um, if, they, if they put him in the suit, like... There's your Superman, Everett. I think he'll be fine. He needs to fill out a little bit, but I think he'll be fine. All right. Not that I even care about the movie at this point, but I think he'll like look the part enough. It's just kind of funny. Anyway. Okay, whatever. That's something. Okay. All right. Um, Top Gun Maverick star Glenn Powell responds to humbling Green Lantern and Psychops fan cast. Uh, hey, you guys know who Glenn Powell is? No. Uh, not by name, but maybe by look. He's like know. he's the wingman in Top Gun, and now he's also he's in that movie with uh Jonathan. Oh, Major. yeah. Also, where he's playing a oh, wingman again. And so I think that's why people keep equating him with Green Lantern, but I actually think that's not bad casting. Honestly. Yeah, you know, I w- with the glasses on, I wouldn't mind seeing him as Cyclops. Doesn't look that bad. Cyclops, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, did, wasn't that one of the things, the one of the fan castings that you just said? I thought it said Green Lantern. <laughs> Didn't you say Green Lantern and Cyclops, or was it just Green Lantern? I don't know. I I, I was just looking at the picture. It says Green Lantern. <laughs> I thought it said both, but yeah, he looks like a, he could be a good Green Lantern. He too. said glasses, and I thought he meant like pilot glasses. Like, where are you? Where's the pilot? <laughs> no, I th- I thought it said um, it said I Green love Lantern. This podcast, dude. dude. The moment you, you go, that ever, pause, here's your dream picture. <laughs> after Everett speaks, we'll go, go go back. <laughs> see, see if I'm right. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, it does oh, say okay. okay. You read Cyclops. I don't know if I said it. Um. Oh god! But yeah, I guess Cyclops is one of them. Sure. Uh, I do want to check out that movie Devotion. Hmm. Did it even come out? I don't know. It says it's a 2022 film, which would say yes, it's out right now. Apparently, there are showings right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you can watch it on a prime time subscription on YouTube. They got billboards up for this movie everywhere in LA. Do they? Yeah. I've heard shit about it out near the airport. I haven't, yeah, I haven't out near the airport. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me let me use my Just Watch app and see if it's. Yeah, we're not sponsored by Just Watch, despite the amount of times we name drop it. This this would be a bad time. It's to, currently on Paramount anyway. Plus for free, or you can ah, uh, okay. buy it for or rent it. Yeah, you can buy it for twenty bucks on Amazon, uh, or YouTube. So I think I'll add that to my list of shit I'll watch when it's a lot cheaper. I'll pay four dollars right. for it. <laughs> that's that's my limit. Um, all right, Mystery Men star William H Macy joins the cast of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Oh God, I forgot. Oh, this... this guy, I like I like this guy. Yeah, I mean he's a. This is the guy dad. that was. Uh, remember, he was in a. He was in Pleasantville. He's the dad in Pleasantville. Yeah, he's been in a lot of things, um, but I I couldn't I can't remember. Is this part of the the trilogy? Kingdom? I have no idea. Um, no, it's the new trilogy they're making. But is it connected? 
Is it a soft reboot is what you're asking? I think it's connected. So it's a soft so. reboot. No, it's just the next trilogy. It's I, like I think it's the next trilogy. I think it's connected. Yeah, it's it's like was the was the fucking was yeah, the newest Star Wars trilogy a reboot? Picks up after the conclusion of 2017's okay. War for the Planet of the Apes. So a, a a full reboot means it's in a different universe. It's different actors. It's completely different. We IP. already established. Okay, what it every, is. every no 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 no, 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 soft, no 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 Let him say a, it. a soft reboot means it's new actors, a new story, but it exists in the universe that the other. No, took that's place not in. what a soft reboot is. A soft reboot is a reboot. This is just a sequel. A soft reboot just picks what it likes from the previous version and then just starts a new thing. Okay. I mean, if it's still taking place in the same universe. Are, are the Star Wars prequel trilogies a soft reboot? I mean, yes. I, no, bro. Is The Hobbit a soft reboot? I mean, yes, because it's taking place in the same universe. It's just from a I don't perspective. know. This is really weird. Isn't Every, The Hobbit just a prequel? Yeah, The Hobbit is just a prequel. It's yeah, just, it, it could be a prequel and a soft reboot the, at the same time. Everything, yeah. Everything that's in the same universe after something is a soft reboot. Yeah, if it takes place in the same, like, if, <laughs> no, no, right, you're Never crazy, dude. Up. I don't know what happened to you. You took some drugs when I wasn't looking or something. I don't, I don't... <laughs> oh, whatever, T- take what you want. I, I know that's that. That's what it is. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. Every... That's not I, I know that's what it is. <laughs> that's not. Let's look up the definition of a soft. Reboot. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll admit it. But soft versus hard <laughs> reboot. Let's see. <laughs> Not for software. In movies. A soft reboot. A reboot of a series in which continuity is retained with the previous material. Yeah, see? That, that, that's anything. That's a sequel or a prequel where continuity is retained. Yeah, meaning like... Okay, so all the movies that took place with Caesar, the original Planet of the Apes movies, if this new movie is taking place... In that same world where all those events happened, then it's technically a soft reboot. Wait a minute, years wait later, a minute, it's different characters. I have something better here, okay? Reboot, noun. There are four options. One, an instance of rebooting, computing. Two, by extension, a fresh start. Three, n- in narrative terms, the restarting of a series storyline, discarding all previous continuity. Four, Parentheses, widely considered a misuse. Parentheses, the restarting of a series storyline without discarding previous continuity. The restarting of a series storyline. This would be a restart because The Hobbit did not restart the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Right. So it has to be a restart to be a reboot, whether it's soft or not. A good example would be Man of Steel. Other than it being about Superman, it has zero connection with the previous Christopher Nolan, Brandon Routh movies. And does not continue any storylines from those movies. Likewise, the Dark Knight trilogy is not connected anyway to the previous Batman films that started with Michael Keaton. See, even even like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin are not soft reboots. A soft because, reboot is right beneath that, Kia. Read that. A soft reboot is a continuation of an established movie series that ignores certain events from that series. Superman Returns is an example of a soft reboot acting as a direct sequel to one and two, but ignoring the events of three and four. Uh, many would argue that Star Trek 2009 was a soft reboot, while many respects it is a continuation of the Star Trek continuity. Yeah, this isn't a this isn't a reboot. This is a direct it's a sequel because it's, it's going to be Caesar's trilogy. son. I I think it's a sequel trilogy. I don't think it's a soft reboot. What do you say? Okay. Uh, I think that a lot of the things you guys said were true, but I still agree with what I said. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the stuff you pulled up agreed with my point. Like the thing you were just reading agreed with my point. No. The core yeah, thing nothing you just about, read? Nothing about the article in the Planet of the Apes thing suggested that it was a soft reboot. It's yeah, that's definitely... what I'm saying. I'm saying that's I'll, – I'll take back what I said about that. But overall, like soft reboots in theory, like I'll still stick with what I believe about that. Can you give another example of a soft reboot? Well, I still th- – I think that bat, like the old – like the older Batman movies, like the – you know, like the Clooney one, like Clooney ones, like those are technically soft reboots because it's a different actor and a different storyline. But technically, it's still in the same universe. Is as Iron the Man ones. Two it, a soft reboot? No, that's a Iron direct Man one. Th- that's a direct sequel. But that's exactly what we're You're not rebooting but, anything. It's just, just the next the movie in the Star sequence. Wars. The Star Wars uh, sequel trilogy is a soft reboot. Which trilogy are I, you talking about? Any of them? I asked you. 
So all movies within a universe are a soft reboot, and you said yes. So okay. that means then Iron if, Man if, 2 then, and then Iron if Man that's, 3 are soft reboots. If that's what you asked, then that's not true. So do you think uh, Star Iron Wars... Man 1 and Iron Man 2 are not reboots of one another. Iron Man 2 is a sequel to Iron Man 1. Yeah, exactly, it, bro. The, okay. the prequel series from Star Wars is a soft reboot because while it still takes place in the universe of Star Wars, it's a different time period, it's different but, characters, but, and a, a different story. But that's the, that's just a sequel. If I did the same thing, so is Rogue One a soft reboot of Star Wars? No. Uh, it, it, but it takes place with different characters in a different time with a different story. At this point, it's you're you're trying to basically get me to say yes or no. It's a rose by any other name. On one hand, you can say it's a sequel because it comes after movies that have already been made of the same series. But on the other hand, you can say it's a my, like a soft so reboot or a is, one-off is the hobbit a soft reboot of lord of the rings it could technically be considered but he wrote soft the reboot. hobbit first yeah but we were talking and about it, the movies no right? i'm talking about the general story is that a soft reboot if you're talking about books then i don't give a shit i'm talking is about lord movies. of the rings a soft reboot of the hobbit are you talking about the books or the movies? I'm talking I'm about not, it I'm as not... a story bro i'm just i think I'm there's some about holes movies. here i'm, I'm talking about movies some holes here bro I think there's some fucking holes here. I don't think those Batman movies are soft reboots. Those are the same continuity. That's what I'm saying. It's the same universe that everything takes place in. It's just different actors and different stories. Recasting doesn't equal a soft reboot. Like what they said about Star Trek, like the 2009 version, I would consider a soft reboot because while it doesn't take place in the universe, they cross it over from the original Star Wars continuity. Like things, yeah. like characters appear... That counts in it's my It's a opinion. different continuity, but they pulled from some previous like things from before. Yeah, that's a soft reboot. They picked and chose what they wanted to keep, and then they did everything else new. That's a soft reboot. Let's just let's just move on. This argument's gonna last forever. <laughs> uh, apparently, there's gonna be a Fast Ten trailer before the Super Bowl. Maybe uh, if there's one movie, movie series I really don't give a shit about anymore, it's definitely the Fast series. I haven't seen anything after Tokyo Drift, but. The only thing I've they can really do six, to seven, animate now, the only thing they can do now is send them to space or bring back CGI Paul Walker, which they'll never do. The Batman star Colin Farrell reveals how he felt after seeing scathing reviews for 2004's Alexander. That's Val Kilmer, by the way. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, expectation is a dangerous thing. There was a load of things that went on with Alexander. The most significant thing to be a part of was two or three hundred people who traveled the world over six months to tell this story and bring it to life. Okay, whatever. whatever. Uh, as Graham, blah, blah, blah. When I say blah, blah, blah. I was in Toronto, and I think I was due a bit foot in the ass, to be honest, which is not the same as saying I deserved it. The reviews came out, and I remember my sister Claudine going, oh, God, it's not good. <laughs> and Danica, who's here today, going, it's really not good, as I go, what do you mean not good? There wasn't any shortcut, Rotten Tomatoes. What percentage are we talking here? It wasn't that. It was, what do you mean? And they had all the printed reviews. And there was one after another, Alexander the Dull, Alexander the Boring, Alexander the Inarticulate, Alexander the Weak. I was like, holy shit. And I thought, what can I do? I felt so much shame. That's kind of funny. to read about. Uh, Black Panther producer shares hopes to introduce MCU's own Black Superman, Blue Marvel. Yeah, uh, if there's one thing the MCU okay. needs is, is more superpowered, like invincible people hey but he's black so it's in fact exactly what we need yes that they'll ever do like a mainstream black superman sure i don't care i don't care if he's black or not like some people do yes yeah, some people on twitter which is like two percent of the population i i don't like who cares if he's black like what, what's the story going to be what's the script Oh, we don't we don't yeah, know about I'm that. I assume just, nothing different from original Superman. We're just gonna say black Superman and then like try to push that as the advertisement. Uh Kamel Nanjiani says he hasn't heard anything about Marvel or hasn't heard anything from Marvel about a sequel. Which I'm like, yeah, if I were them, I would if I even if I was gonna do an Eternals 2, I, I'd definitely be like, how can we shave down this cast list? <laughs> anyway. Secret Invasion star Don Cheadle confirms series directly leads into planned Armor Wars movie. So now Armor Wars is a movie and not a show. No. Yeah, we already reported on that. 
Oh, okay. Because they couldn't do the budget. They couldn't like do it in, over a show like all those all those armors. Because didn't could... we also didn't we also report that Nova is going to be a movie instead of a show now as well? <clears throat> um, Who knows? Um, I I think it's going to be a movie. Is that what you said? Yeah. Secret Invasion is actually one of the few things I'm looking forward to. When does Secret well Invasion come out? Um, I don't know. See. I don't even care they about what he said. They saying. normally tell oh, you, yeah, rumored for a May release. May release, okay. I like the trailer. The Flash star Ezra Miller has now pled guilty to trespassing, burglary, and felony charges. Wait, that is a what? perfect picture oh, that they picked him for that. Has pled guilty to trespassing. Burglary and felony charges are waived. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Emerson, what are you doing? Are you just... <laughs> Sorry, someone had sent me something, so I was reading through it. Um... Uh, Miller was charged with felony burglary in Vermont after allegedly stealing three bottles of liquor from neighbor Isaac Win- Winokur's pantry but they've engaged in much worse behavior over the past year or so. Last we heard, most of the major legal troubles appear to have gone away. The Miller's behavior has caused major headache. Discovery, the studio is still set to release The Flash next year. Uh, He apologized. He's not expected to reprise the role of the Scarlet Speedster again. Uh, DC hasn't made a decision yet. Okay, I mean, so is he going to go to jail? Probably not. I think he's got probation for a year, right? Isn't that the one on the other side of it? Uh, yeah, we'll serve one year probation. That seems like a total slap on the wrist. But Yeah, it, it's yeah. fascinating to me how a certain group of people can just kind of fuck up repeatedly. And meanwhile, there's other groups of people where it's like, yeah, you had a bad day. You're going to jail. Um, the Mandalorian fired star Gina Carano hits back after being mocked for going from Star Wars to $804 flop. So basically, uh, she lashed out at a journalist who mocked the fact that she went from a Star Wars movie from Star Wars to a movie that has only made $804 in the U.S. Wasn't this the Ben Shapiro back yes. with Gina Carano? So domestically, they made $804. <laughs> um, I mean, that's crazy for like famous people. Like You put out a movie should make more than $800. Um, so she made Terror on the Prairie, <laughs> making only $804 at the North American box office. It was released exclusively online and available only to Daily Wire subscribers. Okay. Wow. Um, that seems like a bad business plan. Poke, uh, when the Hollywood reporters Richard Newby poked fun at how badly the actress fumbled the bag by missing out on her own Star Wars TV series, toys, books, comics, and apparel, Carano quickly went on the offensive, accusing the writer of harassing her for the past two years. The former Cara Dune suggested her dismissal from The Mandalorian came as a result of her not going along with the sellout narrative and blaming the online mob for petitioning to get her fired. But didn't she say, like, like I'm being treated like a Nazi or something? She she compared being able to uh, like walk around with a vaccine card to the Nazis controlling people in World War II. I'm yeah. pretty sure, or she like to the Holocaust situation or some shit. Silk Spider Society producer re- reimagining Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon as a TV series for Sony. I don't know I... that we need that, but okay. <laughs> oh, they were novels. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and the other four novels in Wang Dulu's Crane's Iron Pentology, which okay. chronicle the struggles of four generations of Yuxia, a type of ancient Chinese warrior folk hero. Um, Emerson, isn't there isn't that one of the heroes in For Honor, the one with the hooked swords? Nuxia? Is that who I'm thinking of? Yeah, yeah. Nuxia has hooked swords. A sequel to that to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was released in 2016 titled Sword of Destiny. Uh, it didn't receive particularly positive reviews. Actually shot in English before later being dubbed into Mandarin. Oh, okay. The Last of Us arrives on Rotten Tomatoes with a near perfect score following first reviews. Although I don't trust any reviews anymore. Have you guys seen it yet? 
No. no is, is it available to watch? It, yeah, I think so. On HBO? I think. I'll probably watch it. If not, it's coming out in like the next two days. It's this Sunday. So today. Which is today. Okay. Cool. I'll give that a look. Captain Planet live action movie still in development with Glenn Powell attached to star. <laughs> he should not do this. Uh, um, back in 2016, we got word that a live action Captain Planet movie was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> apparently, Leonardo DiCaprio's production studio is going to do it also. Uh, he said that it's still happening. Leonardo DiCaprio and I have been putting that together for several years. With the recent changes over at Warner Brothers, we're just trying to figure out how the pieces will fall. It's an environmental superhero, so it's not necessarily part of DC. It exists outside of that world. <laughs> Him versus time, Superman would be funny. I think the world has never needed an environmental superhero more. Didn't uh, Wait, at the, no, 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 at the bottom of that second quote, he's like trying to say he's going to end up in DC. I don't think he knows what Captain Planet is. So I think it totally fits in with everything that James Gunn and Peter Safran are doing at DC. And Leo and I are very optimistic that we can make something happen. I'd love to play. I mean, he doesn't say... But like, come yeah. on, he says James got a Peter Saffron are doing with DCs. So we'd love to make something happen. Like, um, yeah, somebody tells me he doesn't know exactly what's going on. I grew up with the cartoon. Have you guys ever seen it? I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Don Cheadle played him in something. Yeah, and it I've looks bad. It. Have you seen the interview where he talks about it? No, no. And he's like, he he agreed to do it, and they started putting oh. makeup on him. And he's like, yo, what the fuck is this? And they're like, this is what he looks like. And they showed him a picture. He didn't even know. And he's like, no, I'm not doing that. And then they like somehow talked him into it. Like, those are his words. Oh, man, that does not look good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What do you say to that? This dude was like making Hotel Rwanda and then and that he's in blue face being Captain Planet. Yeah. Oh, Jesus fuck. Christ. <laughs> Did he really wear that outfit? Jesus. <laughs> Is this what they think it's going to look like now? Oh, man, like... That looks really stupid, too. I'm going to be honest. I don't think you can make Captain Planet look good. You can't do gritty Captain Planet. Okay. Um, uh, Pedro Pascal says he wants to do a Marvel movie. Should have been okay. Doctor Strange. Really? Oh, you know what? I can see that. I, t- I told you about that many times. Huh. Well, I always thought. About that. I was saying, like, stop doing like those same like twenty-five to thirty-five white males. Like, we have a million of them. I'm saying, change it up a little bit. Like, give somebody with an accent or something. He would have been perfect. He has like the white hair already. Like he would have been great casting. And he can do comedy really well too. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't know what he'd do at this point. I, I mean, honestly, at this point he would be totally wasted. Mm. If we're being honest. So all right, I think that's it for news. You guys got anything? No, no I'm good. No uh smart ass or anything ever. Nah, not this time. All right, then. This is definitely our last episode for a while. <laughs> we will not be returning for any random movies anytime. Um, we still have like seven movies that we might look into. Um, honestly, I would I would be willing to do like nine more episodes at some point just to get to 300. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll see what it becomes somewhere down the road. So this is us saying goodbye, possibly forever. <laughs> goodbye <laughs> to the one random dude who clipped that, it got that timestamp of Ryan falling down. Please put the timestamp wherever it says, yes, all movies within a universe are a reboot. Please put that timestamp in the comments. Somebody just put a timestamp right now. <laughs> is it him? Are we going out no, live? Here, let's, let's see. Because I got a notification and I don't know I don't know what what the timestamp is. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Oh boy. Well, we gotta check what out whatever this is out. Okay, hold on. Share sound. 
Papa Hades. Let's see what you got. And the GTA 5 Diamond Casino has been released. Yep. Oh, joy. <laughs> yeah, okay. let's talk about it because you guys played it more than me. Well, okay. I haven't played it at all. I've not even been inside it. So, Everett, take it away. Well, okay. Oh, so, obviously, I'm going to be a bit biased because I, I genuinely enjoy what they released. But you guys are right. There are this. a massive amount of problems with it. First of all, and yeah, I'll go as nitpicky as I can, no new weapons, no new real outfits, no new real vehicles except for, like, four. And they're not even that good. So right off the bat, uh, content release is minuscule at most. When you actually get to the casino and the gambling, there's really only a few things that you can do. And even then, you're blocked off from doing it. There's Wait, is five this? separate things, I think, you can do to make money in that casino. First one is the wheel which you have to buy a membership to do, and you get it once a day, which isn't that bad. You get a reward every time you GTA. For me, uh, interestingly guess. enough, I got the car the very first time I spun it, so it already got ruined for me. I have nothing left to do with it, so I haven't spun it since. Uh, the second one is Blackjack. and I'm trying to figure out if there's something this Blackjack, is to uh, What, it roulette? It's the addiction of it in terms of like how often you need to win to keep playing. In? is absolutely not proportionate at what all. What is he replying like, for to? Instance, um, me and Cameron were doing it. We bot? bet three times and lost and then won once. Check out what Papa like, is times we it, It's not worth it at all. What else has he done? We're doxing someone live on screen right there. Uh, if we're doxing him to like five people. <laughs> it's probably him. I don't know. I guess he's just into GTA talk, I guess, from three years ago. Okay. I don't know. That was a lot down, Papa Hades. We thought everyone was going to say something stupid. And... <laughs> Although we had plenty of that in this episode. so Papa Hades, you can redeem yourself by finding the episode where Everett's ex-girlfriend talks in the background. And he yes. says, you know what? I want to know, I want, I want to know that one, that too. Find that timestamp. Get it in the comments here, dude. We'll feature, I don't know. <laughs> we'll watch whatever movie you want us to watch when we come back. Everett, can but... we talk about that for a second? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What were you thinking when you were trying to say that it was your computer making noises when someone is clearly like <laughs> Everett saying, and then you mute it right away? So you guys probably know by now that I have a, I'm really bad under like stressful situations and like immediate shit, and it's just one of those very prime examples of me panicking at the wrong moment and saying the wrong thing. And obviously, it was not me. Uh, it was not my computer. That was definitely my girlfriend at the time. But here's what I want to know though. Why did you continue to tell us it was your computer? Because I was, I don't know, I was embarrassed or something. I didn't want to fucking talk about it. But I, don't know. Uh, I would love to know which episode that happened on. Yeah, the types that yeah, I, I've been looking for that. I've been combing through episodes <laughs> forever. I can't find it. She says something he, while he's talking, and we're like, what was that? He immediately hits mute and doesn't respond. <laughs> and then comes he's back like, and it was says, my computer <laughs> telling me a notification. I would, I would put that episode in the if i could but i, I could ne never could find it so very deep in our episodes you just have to go back and listen to every single episode yeah there's Almost only 291 episodes, yeah i feel like some of them might have been deleted some i remember there was a few that like disappeared for some reason hopefully yeah. it wasn't one of those yeah all right yeah. This is it. This is the end. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. <laughs> we'll still do our Hot Toys thing, though. I think once a month for now. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Goodbye.